This video is going to be a film study look at how the Detroit Lions defense was able to go into Arizona and really force the Cardinals offense to be one-dimensional. Arizona had, in the first two weeks of the season, they had run for 355 yards in terms of the rushing attack. On the first possession yesterday, Kyler Murray was able to keep on an option play for 13 yards around the right edge and scramble for 21 yards. Those 34 yards accounted for the overwhelming majority of Arizona's rushing attack. In fact, they finished with 77 yards. And the way that Detroit's defense did it was all the more impressive if you ask me. First of all, a whole bunch of guys are involved. A lot of guys make plays at different times. We're going to focus this on the run game. I will have a couple of pass plays mixed in here, but I'll, I think I'll do a standalone video on the coverages a Tuesday afternoon. By the end of the third quarter, early fourth quarter, Arizona had given up on the run game completely. In fact, their last 20 offensive snaps of the game, I believe, were pass game, pass plays in a game that where they were only down 20 to 10 and then 20 to 13. What makes it all the more unique, I think, and interesting in terms of how Detroit was able to get this accomplished was Derek Barnes got hurt on a split zone play where it looked like he got cut. Looks like it could be a bad injury. Terry on Arnold went out for a little bit and then came back in. Alex Anzalone already out at inside linebacker. Brian Branch got hurt, I think a neck stinger or something like that, and he came back in. Aline McNeil, I believe, went out late in the third quarter, somewhere around that area. So the, the Lions' depth was challenged, and they were up to the task against a team that was physical. They, From the film that I saw, which I haven't seen every single Arizona offensive snap, but there's a lot of 12 personnel, 13 personnel groups. They're trying to be heavy in the run game, and at least against the Lions on Sunday, it didn't work. Let's get to the film. There should be some encouraging things, if you ask me, from, from the standpoint of who is making plays for this Lions defense. This is first possession of the game. It's a first and 10, and they're going to be an outside zone concept to their left. They gave you the end zone angle first, so you could focus on Marcus Davenport. I thought he played with tremendous force on a handful of plays yesterday. In this case, he's lined up in a 4-I, so inside shade of the tackle. He's actually stepping down, however, to the guard. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation, slight combo with a left tackle, reaching out his right arm. And now Davenport has framed up the guard. He was just a mismatch at times yesterday. DJ Reader as well, other guys in the run game were effective. It only ends up being a one-yard gain for Connor. Those guys, it's the same play end zone angle, excuse me, all 22 angle. Those guys, Arizona, have been able to bully at times the first two games in terms of the run game, not yesterday at all. Like I said, Kyler Murray hit four. I think Kyler Murray finished with 45 yards rushing out of the 77. The running backs for Arizona got nothing accomplished at all. Still first possession. This is going to be the option keeper for Kyler Murray, whereby the running back is downhill on that path there, and then Kyler Murray is going to keep it and run around the edge. This is a first and 10 pistol option. Can be a pain, don't get me wrong, but in many cases it's kind of limited from the standpoint of which way the quarterback opens. In this case, Aiden Hutchinson's kind of trying, trying to feather this and play half of the, the running back and then half of the quarterback. There's nobody else to the outside at all. Ends up being a 13-yard keeper for Kyler Murray off the right side. Previously, you guys may know if you've watched much of my videos, Previously, in, in last year in 2023, the Lions have run the defensive end down violently to take on and smack the running back, whether it's a pistol option or a zone read. There seems to be a slight change in that philosophy early here in 2024. Maybe I'll try to compile some plays for people that are in my Patreon and Discord to be able to determine exactly that, how often the Lions this year in 2024 are actually feathering it versus running down the line of scrimmage to take away the running back. So, this is going to be the big scramble by Kyler Murray. Derek Barnes is still on the field here up to the top side of the screen. Briefly, the Lions have him kind of corralled. It's after a holding call on Arizona's first possession created the first and 20. They're bringing a five-man rush. So briefly, they have him corralled. And just the relative inexperience of Derek Barnes, if you ask me, as an as a edge defender, you guys know I think he played extremely well in week two. But in this case, he folds underneath. Kyler Murray is able to sense it. I will give you the end zone angle and then get out of there for 21 or 22 yards. Look, mobile quarterbacks are the bane of defense's existence at every level. It's not to say that Lions fans shouldn't expect more, shouldn't expect your team to be able to hold down 
a mobile quarterback at times, keep him from scrambling. You want that is what you want. That's the end goal. In this case, the relative weakness of Derek Barnes, he's great in pass coverage, in my opinion, really good against the run. I think he's a super smart and versatile player. He's not an edge rusher like Aiden Hutchinson or some of the other guys across the league that are going to be able to contain that, that have been in that position a ton. Derek Barnes' versatility, in this case, kind of works against him. He's not a guy who you want in that position 10 to 15 times a game. Moving on, second possession. This is going to be an example of great pursuit by, by Brian Branch. It's a 12 personnel grouping. By Arizona, split zone. This is the one where Barnes got hurt, gets hurt. The Lions are up 13-7 to at this point already. We're early second quarter. So after the second tight end motions across, post-snap, he's going to slide down the heels of the offensive line, and he's going to kick out Derek Barnes. This is the one that gets him carted off. Additional to that, I think you have Harrison running across the field. And Branch is going to be the guy in chase, number one. And then Branch peels off of that and helps push Kyler Murray out of bounds. Only a three-yard gain. We'll get kind of rocking and rolling here in terms of the actual run defense breakdown stuff. Barnes is out. So at this point, I think it's Neiman or Newman. I'll pronounce it Neiman. Hopefully that's correct. So it's a 4-3 look by the Lions. Again, this is second possession. It's a thir you're up 13-7 at this point, early second quarter. On the motion, Neiman is going to slide back into a 4-3 will position. You get a pretty significant combo here on McNeil, a one-on-one -on -one for Reader that he kind of compresses. I believe I give you the end zone angle of this one. You can see how highly he jacks up that center and presses him immediately into the backfield. There's no cutback lane for this running back at all. It's got to be downhill now, and Neiman is fitting on the backside in between that gap, basically over the top of McNeil. Hutchinson is involved as well. End zone angle, same play. We'll let it run a couple of times. The physicality with which so many guys played for the Lions is what I think was noticeable. Malcolm Rodriguez in there in the case of Anzalone. Neiman steps onto the field when Barnes gets hurt. McNeil, at a certain point in the game, goes out. A lot of guys, the physicality of the game, I think, took its toll on both teams. Ends up being a three-yard gain for Connor, like I said, on a second and seven. Moving forward, we're still in the second quarter. This is third possession. Counterplay out of the pistol for Connor, who had gotten a lot done in the first two weeks. In the run game, not this week at all. Newman ends up being the edge defender to the boundary. This would be where Derek Barnes normally would, would play. Rodriguez is going to get caught up in the trash. Somewhere in this area here, he gets caught up in the trash and can't scrape over the top. It's a counter concept, so you've got a pulling lineman and then pulling tight end as well. It's the second puller into the boundary trying to outnumber you. It still only goes down for three-yard gain because Jack Campbell was able to scrape over the top as the backside inside linebacker. End zone angle, same play. So Newman as the edge defender. Rodriguez trying to fold over the top. It's caught in the trash. Like I said, it allows Connor to kind of bounce it. They're just trying to outnumber Detroit to the boundary by pulling the guard and pulling the other tight end. Nice flow, if you ask me, by Jack Campbell staying on the backside hip of the running back. Still same possession. This is going to be the, the pass interference. Pretty bad one down here on Arnold. It's just a flip up by the quarterback, Kyler Murray. There's really no concept here other than just let me throw the ball up to Wilson and uh, rely on potential of a 50-50 ball at worst, a DPI at best. And in this case, Arnold um, isn't able to make a play on the ball or make it look like he's making a play on the ball, and so flags fly. As an aside, Jalen Reeves Maben is on the field a, a little bit more often than maybe the design. Uh, during the game because of the absence of Anzalone, because of the absence of Derek Barnes eventually, and, and you will see some situations where Arizona was able to exploit that. Third possession, this is going to be a ridiculous play by Marcus Davenport up at the top. He's not involved in the tackle, but he blows it up. The physicality, the size and strength that he plays with, uh, he looks like a pissed-off dude on this play. Hutchinson and Branch get credit for the tackle, but notice Davenport. 
at the severe angle, just blow up the pulling offensive lineman and disrupt the entire flow of the play. I would call it F counter. Knocks the lineman back. Hutchinson and Branch are able to get involved here from the backside. Two other defenders, Rodriguez and Davenport, get in there. I love that play. Just I think it illustrates the potential there is for Davenport at the point of attack. Fifth possession now. Lions are up 20 to 10 at this point. 13 personnel by Arizona. Connor's going to go up the middle. I like the fold down here by Anzarike. Those backside defensive tackles seem to give Arizona trouble, whereby the front side guys, in many cases, were getting double teams. Uh, notice what the Lions have done. They've walked Rodriguez up and Jalen Reeves Mabin to the side where two tight ends are basically trying to overwhelm that side of the offensive line. Reader getting a combo from the backside guard. And then Anzarike is going to fold here in this direction from the backside. I'm not sure if I give you the end zone angle of this one. My apologies. But it's a four-yard gain. Don't get me wrong for Connor. So it's positive. But on a second and 10, you're up 20 to 10. And the Detroit just fought for every inch. It seemed like every guy that was on the field was competing for every inch. There was a real visible level of physicality that those guys played with across the board. Jalen Reeves Mabin is down here as an edge defender. He gets pretty much rocked to the bottom side. This is one of the more positive runs for Arizona. It's fifth possession. Again, you're still up 20 to 10 at this point. They've rolled up branch to the bottom side, to the tight end wing side. Ends up being an outside zone concept that, that hits off tackle for Connor for seven yards, and he's excited. A couple of things, Jack Campbell obliterates a potential blocker pretty much at this angle, number one. Number two, not to pick on him, I think Jalen Reeds Maven is just in there trying to uh, contribute, and this is just not what he's suited to do as an edge defender. Uh, getting dislodged by three or four yards off the line of scrimmage just can't happen. You can see one of the guys peeled off, and Campbell pretty much shotgunned him into the ground. Nonetheless, Branch has to fold inside. Jalen Reeds Maven, in fact, actually gets involved along with Malcolm Rodriguez. Still ends up being a seven-yard game. Fifth possession still, very next play, in fact, second and three. This is going to be, from a Cardinals perspective, unfortunate decision by Kyler Murray. He thinks that they've caught the Lions lining up late, which is true. The Lions were not ready for the snap, so he's rushing to get the playoff and rushing to get the pass downfield. And Kirby Joseph, I mean, this is a ball that Kirby Joseph, I think, catches nine times out of ten or, or you know, 99 times out of 100, at least in his career. It's intended for... You know, Marvin Harrison Jr., there really is no pass rush to speak of on Kyler Murray. I think he's forcing this throw because probably Detroit had lined up late. Maybe he thought there was a penalty of some kind on Detroit. I don't know if they were worried about 12 men being on the field, but this is not a freebie situation at all. Poor decision, if you ask me, to throw this football. Easy interception for Kirby Joseph. Moving forward here, sixth possession, third quarter, by the way. Detroit is still up 20 to 10. Of course, Detroit didn't score at all in the second in the second half. Jalen Reeves may have been on at edge defender once again. And this is after, I believe it's after the interception that Goff threw. Benson is in the game at running back, ends up bouncing it to the outside, breaking a tackle from Brian Branch. So cool concept for them. It's a it's a <clears throat> It's a counter-follow scheme, so you're pulling two offensive linemen, and you've got a motioning wide receiver. So three players out in front able to create this kind of wall for him. Benson bounces it, Hutchinson tracking him down all the way from the other side of the field. What I mean by that is this is Hutchinson down here into the boundary on the same side as the running back. Long way for him to go. Branch misses a tackle as well, but he's the backside safety. So Branch is here. Anzalone is here, snaking all the way around. Those two guys are the primary players that, that make the tackle. Joseph misses it. Benson bounces off Branch's tackle. Physical stuff. Ends up being a six-yard gain. Creates a second and four. Again, this is sixth possession, third quarter. About halfway through the third quarter. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Same concept, pretty much, into the boundary with Benson. Again, very next play. Counter, he bounces it. 
Carlton Davis the third is there. I thought Carlton Davis the third, Carlton Davis the third played extremely well against the run, and was a factor on some of these plays where it bounced. And clearly, he's going to be a factor on the fourth and one where Kyler Murray is is on the keeper out to the right. DJ Reader anchoring here. This is a downhill run concept on a third and two. That was a two yard gain on the previous play. So so very next snap, six possession again, up twenty to ten, third and two. De Mercado, who I watched play against the Ravens last year, he was a downhill guy. He gave us trouble. In this case, Aiden Hutchinson folds back in from the backside, unblocked, folds in from the backside. He's able to grab De Mercado here and sling him to the ground, hold him to a one-yard gain, create that fourth and one. Weird timing with the with the wide receiver Wilson. Number one, Wilson has to cut in front of De Mercado. I mean, there's some real confusion there or mistiming if you ask me but look at how dj reader is bent up here creating an anchor whatever you want to call it we call a hard joint basically you're not going to run to that outside gap but we'll give you the end zone angle so you can see that one him and anzarike on the field watch him turn his back get his cleats into the ground dig in in an instant because he knows there's a double team coming and so he's dug into the ground, creating a hard joint here that can't be compressed or, or expanded. And then he's able to drive off that leg again. It's such that they plug up the gap, hold De Mercado to a one-yard gain, create that important fourth and one. I think Carlton Davis III gets, um, ends up on the inside a little bit too much here, and it almost hurts him. Of course, it was ruled a first down initially. Dan Campbell challenged it and won the challenge. I don't pretend to know or have an opinion necessarily on it. Um, I do think that Carlton Davis III would like to stay a little bit further to the outside because he gives Murray the opportunity to possibly get to the sideline because he is so quick. His hand being on Murray's neck or upper body, shoulder area, whatever, almost is what I think probably kept Murray from being able to slide forward. He certainly looks short there. The All-22 doesn't look as... Um, as positive from a Lions standpoint. They're definitely clogging everything up in here. So good call by Arizona, isolating you know their most athletic guy, Kyler Murray. In this case, Carlton Davis the third was up to the task. All 22, you can see how excited Aaron Glenn was, by the way. There is Davis. It's going to be a fake. Fourth and one keeper around the right edge. Really close. I mean, I don't know how they, what they ruled or whatever. You guys watched the game live. I was unable to do so. I didn't watch it until Sunday night and then again here Monday morning. But great play by Carlton Davis the third. You have to give him credit regardless of, of whether Kyler Murray was one inch short or whether he got it or whether he was right at the sticks. Fantastic play by him. Moving forward here, this is going to be the last run play of the game for the Arizona Cardinals. I think it's with two minutes left, three minutes left, excuse me, in the third quarter. Thereafter, you're talking about 20 straight runs. Ends up being a tackle for loss by Carlton Davis III out on the edge. Jalen Reeves-Maben is out there battling. I think he's you know better suited, obviously, for pass situations and pass coverage. He's going to be the guy that misses the tackle on Connor, who looks like he's gained more, more bulk and size since he played with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But Reeves may have been unable to finish the tackle. Carlton Davis III does. He's super fired up about it as well. He should be. I think he had seven tackles on the day. Jack Campbell's there involved as well. This seemed like a team effort. Just from the def I watched the defense for um, every run play, and then I was able to go watch and back go watch all of the fourth quarter, all 20 pass plays in a row by Arizona. You could tell that they seeded ground, meaning they realized we're not going to be able to get anything done in the run game. Not, except, except perhaps some zone read stuff. I was a little surprised I didn't go back to that, to be honest with you, uh, in, in certain moments. have to give Detroit's defense credit. I, I don't know how it feels for you as a Lions fan, number one, to have a team that's so good that you can win on a day when the offense only generates 20 points and your defense is really dominant. But you have so much depth. There's so many guys that were injured during this game. I think five by my count. Maybe it was only four. Who, who were injured at a, at a certain point during the game and either came back or went out for the game. To have that much depth created, Anzarike, McNeil, Reeder, Marcus Davenport, 
They brought in Newman or Neiman, excuse me, for a little bit, settled on Jalen Reeves, Mabin eventually. It's a deep team on the defensive side of the ball. I think you've got exactly what Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell envisioned with free agency, signing DJ Reader, signing Carlton Davis III, bringing in Amik Robertson, trading for uh, Carlton Davis III, excuse me, and then drafting some of the guys they drafted, Terrion Arnold in the first round as a corner. I think they've got exactly what they wanted. I think the Lions have built a defense that they think can go on the road and or win in the they can rely on to win playoff football games in the NFC and beyond. You guys have to let me know what you think of how the how well the defense played in our Discord. Lions fans were certainly excited about the defense, not about the interception by golf. They certainly weren't excited about that. And the pick six that was called back for the two minute warning, which would have been a terrible situation. Lions avoid turnovers. If they right now, if they're able to avoid turnovers and generate 23, 24 points plus I feel like you can beat every single team in the league with how this defense is playing. You guys let me know what you think of that thought. It's probably an oversimplification, but I always like to talk about if you're plus one turnover margin, minus one turnover margin, or you're even. And right now, if you ask me, it looks like if this Lions team is plus one turnover margin and the defense plays the way they did Sunday, they're going to be difficult to beat, whether it's at home or on the road. Appreciate you guys' time, man. I'll have a... uh, a possession review up late Monday night, probably during the Monday night football game, maybe at halftime or or afterwards because there's two games tonight. I have a possession review where I talk about uh, the Lions closing out the game, number one in the fourth quarter, and some similar run concepts that they utilized earlier in the game to really get Arizona's defense back on their heels. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this film study look, at how Detroit's defense was able to go into Arizona and really make them one-dimensional, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.